Um, oh, by the way, uh, my name is Dylan Jay. For anyone who haven't um, met me before, I run my own company called PredaWeb. We do a lot of uh, web development, um, particularly lately for government. Um, so build out. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a bunch of things that are kind of similar. Um, so hopefully by going through this tutorial, you kind of see what the differences are. So how do you get build outs? Well, generally what you're doing is you're creating something locally. And there are two ways to um, get an initial build out or get started. One is to do the uh, bootstrapping. So you can, um, for instance, that won't work if I don't. You can get this uh, bootstrap script. There's a couple of them around, which is a small Python script. Um, so if I go and put that into bootstrap.py, so I go get that, and then I can go Python 2.6 bootstrap. And that does the necessary things to install the build out egg itself and um, create a, a small local environment. So it's it's a little bit like um, virtual env in that what it's trying to do is create a local environment for you to install things uh, and have your own version of uh, various different uh, Python libraries and other things all locally. Um, yeah, it sandboxes it within the one build out folder. Um, I know it's a little bit hard to describe. Um, so virtual env is one is one aspect of it, right? Where what the problem virtual env is trying to solve is that you want to isolate uh, your development environment or uh, one particular environment for for various reasons with all your system uh, Python libraries and things like that um, in a locally. So for instance, have you used virtual environments? Um, so one of the problems with Python and easy install and when you install system um, uh, Python libraries is they all go into one big site packages on your system and you can get lots of different versions, uh, lo lots of different um, packages in there and you can get version conflicts between them. Um, it, it just becomes a big kind of soupy mess. So why should you, uh, you know, just stick to one set of versions within one computer? Why does a, a, a system level have to be uh, your repository of all your um, libraries? Why can't you have one set of libraries over here for this purpose and one set of libraries over there for that purpose? And that's kind of what Buildout is trying to solve. Um, so it's it's uh, the way it describes itself on the website. Um, there's a website is is creating repeatable deployments. Um, it's particularly good when you want to say if you've got a team of people working on a piece of software, you can create a Buildout configuration file, and if I give it to you, you will have exactly the same environment with all the same bits of software and it will install all those bits of software all locally uh, for for you and for me and for everyone else in the team. So we're all working on the same things. You don't have to describe manually and say, oh, go and install, uh, mm, go and install, you know, Django 1. whatever and then go and install, uh, you know, the, uh, um, you know, the fabric library but you've got to get the 2.5 fabric library for instance or whatever. Um, so that's kind of the problem it's trying to solve. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, well, it's yeah, it doesn't necessarily get into. It's more about application development. So, like for instance, when you're building websites. Um, often the stuff that you're building with websites is using lots of bits and pieces of software that you want explicit versions with because you're running ahead of the curve. You're not necessarily using system libraries for everything. Um, so you want to test everything locally. You want to have deploy it to another server and you want to have that be the exact same versions and that's well tested. And you might want to have multiple of them on the same machine and not have to worry about it. Um, Yeah, I mean, you know, virtualization is another way to solve it, right? Just have totally different operating systems. That's that's possibly another way of doing it. But like, for instance, um, if you look at my projects directory, right? 
I have all these different projects that I'm working on for different clients, you know, different government agencies, different things. So each of them have slightly different versions of clone, which is the CMS we work on, different versions of plugins. Um, some of them use Apache for various reasons, some of them use uh, Nginx. Um, so if I had to install those all on my machine, I'd have a big problem. If I had different virtual um, machines on my computer, that's a very heavyweight solution. Like you talk, like you say, I've got like all these virtual machines, and I've got to log into each one. So um, it's kind of a lighter weight way of solving that. Um, what I'm hoping is that if we kind of go through it, it kind of you can sort of see how it'll get used. Um, but it is a hard thing to describe. Okay, so th what it did is create um, a script there, generated script bin slash build out. So one of the things about build out is it creates a, a directory for you and it has a local bin folder. So there's a whole bunch of stuff already in there because I installed this before. But what we have now is this bin build out. So instead of running commands globally, you don't have a, a pipe, you don't uh, necessarily use things from the system um, um, folder. You run everything from bin slash. So now it's bootstrapped itself by putting uh, build out, which is the, the number one thing we need in our local environment in order to build everything else. So build out has uh, a number of options. Um, one of which is init, which is the other way that I said you could create it. You can install build out into your total big environment and then go build out init and it will do the same as bootstrap. Um, so now the build out, the center of the build out is this build out dot configuration file. So let's have a look at this one. Don't worry about the rest of that here. So build out configuration file is the any file kind of syntax. And what it will do is it uh, has a, a top part, which is always build out up the top here. Uh, it has a part which indicates um, exactly which parts uh, are going to be executed, and the parts refer to these parts down here. So parts equals paster, list of parts, here's the paster part, and everything has a recipe. Okay, so the re recipes are plugins that tell it how to do something. So build out by itself does very, very little. It's the recipes that do all the work. So for those in, uh, who's familiar with Easy Install, Easy Install is a, a set of tools way of installing system packages. It'll go and download the, the eggs or the, the, the source distributions of Python packages and bring them in, stick them into your system package. So this is kind of the equivalent of Easy Install. So all it's doing here is saying that uh, we there's a thing on uh, out there on PyPy. I have to start mine. So the Python index, there's a there's a egg called uh, Py, uh, Paster Script. Does everyone know Paster? Uh, yeah, Paster is a really lightweight web server compliant to the whiskey standard, so it's a way of sort of um, putting together websites. So if I search for paste script, everyone's aware of the Python package index? This is like the global repository of all different bits of Python software. Um, that is actually a recipe, which isn't what I wanted. But anyway, it's in there. So I could do easy install, Python, um, uh, paste, paste script, and it will install something in my system uh, path, so I could just go paste. Or, and alternatively, I could put this into my build out, and then if I run bin build out, it will go and do exactly the same thing as easy install. Hopefully. I think it's going to run very slow as this network. But if, if you don't have the settings of easy install, it should be able to install the path that you put in the relative path. It's installed in the relative path. So build out installs everything relatively. So when it when it comes across an instruction to install um, scripts, 
from a from a Python package, it will install it in bin the bin directory. I don't know what these warnings are about. Um, it's also uninstalling stuff. So what it does is it checks the differences between you installed it last time and when you installed it this time, and it uninstalls things and installs things dependent. So generate a script and bin slash paster. So there is our package. Has anyone got a, a, a script that they want to install or an A? But you can put anything else in there. Um, so one of the interesting things, though, is that you can actually put multiple um, eggs in here. So you can create your own um, little mini environment um, in that paste in that script. Sorry, I meant to show you what's in that script. So all it's really doing is, if you go into Lint uh, and have a look at the script. You can see that uh, it's modifying the Python path a little bit, and it's putting that particular um, egg in there, and then running the script. So if we go, um, let's say I want to add to this uh, repo.bfg, my new favorite web framework. Um, something's kind of wrong at the moment. It uh, seems to be losing the. The build out. I don't know. I just noticed that happening today. Um, anyway, while that runs again. So, what you get is a file layout. You have the bin directory, which contains all your local scripts. And you have a look at files and logs and things like that. Um, exactly what goes into which depends on the particular recipes that you're running. Um, so Z3 recipe scripts we just had a look at. Um, one of the interesting things about that one, if we have a look at that again, I also put this interpreter equals Python. Um, without that, it will just create the scripts that are available in here. With the, the interpreter one, we, can, we actually get uh, a Python version, an interpreted version, that has those particular eggs installed in it. So we have our own personal little Python version with our own stack of, of eggs and, just, and packages in there. So if I go import, paste, that's now available in there. Um, so we're going to build out. That again. Install the repo. Um. Okay. Um, so development eggs. So often what you're going to do is you're going to be developing code locally, um, say for a website or something like that. So you want to have a, instead of downloading it off the, uh, off the air, internet or downloading it off somewhere else, you want to actually have your own local version. So in this particular directory, um, I have something called Clone Go, which is a, a little website I wrote. Um, so I just tell it exactly where to get that local egg from, and then it'll put that into the path and make it available. So I think it's in Go. Uh, and if I delete this, so here's a, another scripts one where it has the repos BFG and my plung Go egg. So that's referring to the uh, package that's in that directory. So if I put instance here, so 
that's found the develop package. Um, it's saying that no. So one of the things you get is that it tries to keep the versions consistent. Um, so now it's got a version conflict. Um, and basically what it's saying is that um, we've got a version of Pi Crypto, which is one of the things that's needed, but something else requires a version less than that. It doesn't go and, and magically work out the, the version differences for you. Um, so what I can do here is if I want to do this, is I could do something like this and say, well, for this instance here, what I want is, I'm not sure if that's work, uh, will work or if I have to actually specify a much uh, specific version. Yep, that worked. So that told it, you know, to, to pick a version, don't go and pick a version ahead of itself. So what it's done is installed um, the paster script that has links into uh, my particular website. And if I run paster, Um, now, what you need for Paster uh, is you need an any file which tells it exactly how to run the application. So I still can't serve my application yet. It needs a config file. So this is the other thing that build out does quite well is that it either has recipes that create config files for you, whether they be varnish VCL files or Apache config files or other kind of config files, or you can build them yourself. So if we have a look at our build out again. So the kind of build, uh, the file that's needed looks a little bit like this. Paster.any files have a, a default section there. They have a, let me just make this a bit bigger. They have a server section and they sort of say, well, in the egg, plug and go, go to the app and run this, run it on the local host and run it on this uh, particular port. It's just a little bit of instructions around what you should do. But I mean, Apache with Mod Whiskey or whatever else has its own configuration files. And what we're doing to make, we're going to make a, a, a local version of this. And what we're going to do to do that is we're using another recipe here um, called collective recipe.template. Now, one of the things you notice about these recipes is that that recipe there, well, where's it all coming from? Well, again, it just gets downloaded off the internet off the Python package index. So you can find recipes for almost anything. Just type in recipe equals and pull in something that will configure your system for you with build out. Uh, that makes it really powerful. Um, so this particular uh, recipe, it takes uh, an output parameter, says where I want the, uh, the output to go, it takes an input parameter, which can be a file, which is uh, my, my template. I mean, I'm actually not parameterizing this, so this could just be a standard file if it, I could just have this locally. Um, but in this case, I'm just using an inline template, and it just has to be indented. So all I've got to do is make sure that this thing here gets created as part of the build. So So it installed paster any, and what did it actually do? You didn't see it said generating any scripts, and that's because it, it wasn't something that installed a script. What it did is put something in parts, called the paster any, and basically just did that template. So now, this is just a paste uh, syntax. Now I can start my little development website. Let's see how that goes. Internal server error. Oh dear. Must have been playing with the code. But anyway, it is accessing the, uh, the website there. Um, and you can see that in here. Um, so, um, one of the other cool things you can do is you can start to parameterize things. Because what you can do is you can start to join these bits and pieces of config um, together. 
let's say I, um, I'll just create a section called um, ports. I use this quite a lot, and I want my web port to be equal to 8080. But that doesn't get used by anything by default. Then I can go down here, and where it asks for the port, I'll just uh, say ports colon web. Yeah, by default it'll get rid of spaces. Um, I'm not sure if that if there's a way to preserve spaces. Good question. Um, these particular ones? No, they're just spaces. It's just. Oh yeah, that's possibly true. Good point. So I added that parameter, so what it will do is it will uninstall paste or any. So what it knows is it does a signature for each part and says, okay, that one of the parameters has changed. I will go and um, rebuild that particular thing. It will delete the, the file that was um, created and recreate it. So if we have a look at parts, paste or, paste or any, it uh, now has the ADA in it. And the same kind of thing, if I wanted to change that to one, it's clever enough to know that that's changed, that that particular one relies on it, uh, and it's now 8081. So you can build up quite, um, you know, complex um, systems with that kind of, with that kind of thing in it. Um, oh, um, it, minus capital N means don't um, go and get the newest versions of things. It's just a habit I got into because um, by default build out will try and upgrade things. Um, so normally what you do is you, you have your versions pinned, you know, so that it doesn't go and so it knows exactly which particular versions of things to get. Um, but it's just a safety kind of thing. I don't want it to go and get new versions of everything all the time. You can also put um, uh, newest equals false or something at the top, I think, of the file. Um, okay, so that was the, the recipe template. Uh, Mr. Developer is a really cool um, extension as well. So when you're developing things, you can get it to... Um, Let me um, just show you another config file here. So this is a slightly different one. So uh, before I talk about Mr. Developer, this shows you another kind of thing about build out. Is the extends equals. So what we're doing here is we're actually um, overriding one file, the standard build out file, with another file. So it, it's overriding it. So we're creating a more specific, like a, kind of like a subclass. So it's an include. Um, see this plus equals syntax here. It says that you know take the parts from the the base one and and add these extra bits to it. Um, so Mr. Developer here is an extension. So extensions are slightly different than recipes. They get run um, ahead of time. And what they do is they check things out. So if we go have a look at the sources section that it references, just ignore that. So what it says there is that go and git check out all these different bits of code that are needed. Um, so it's kind of like a SVN externals. Uh, it's a nice way of doing it when using something like Git because uh, you don't have SVN externals. Um, now, um, this one gives you a whole bunch of other stuff. So if I go, um, bin, so if I go bin build out minus n and then minus c, and I'll use that develop config. Instead, so you can see what it's doing is uh, Mr. Developer is doing some stuff. It's queuing some stuff at the checkout. It'll automatically check them out into the directory um, if they're in the auto checkout um, configuration. It then automatically adds those into the develop equals, so they become part of development eggs that you can use within the build out. 
Um, it's assuming that they're um, Python. You can make them, they could be non-Python if you want. Um, and then if we have a look in our source, we have a whole bunch of packages that are all checked out. Now those could be Mercurial, they could be SVN, they could be just uh, Ori in the file system from somewhere else. Um, so that's Mr. Developer. Um, so variable substitution, we saw that a little bit. Um, the macros are another interesting area. Um, let's go back to the original build out there. So let's say here we wanted to, um, we want to have two paste innings. We want another paste inning. So, and what we wanted to do is we want to have a different host. Um, well, first, actually, let's say we want it to, to uh, be output somewhere different. So we're going to use this. We're going to put in paste two. Paste two dot any. But we want all the rest of it. We don't want to have to like write it again. So we can just use this. We can go paste any. And that's kind of like a macro. So it overrides that particular part and allows us to reuse it. So if I put paste any two in there. Ah, uh, yes, exactly, yep. I wouldn't, I didn't actually need to have both of them in there. Um, that's because I can't spell. Yeah, so let's try that out. If I get rid of paste any. Yeah? Or up there. Nothing like dyslexia to make good live demos. Okay, so if I build that, it's going to uninstall those things that were installed before, and it's just going to install the paste or any. So if we go, what is it, paste or two? So there's paste or two. But it also in uh, it also installed. Actually, no, it doesn't actually install paste or anything. Sorry, because it's a macro, it treats the other one as a as a template. Uh, if you refer to a variable from somewhere somewhere else, it will actually install that for you. But if it's um, referring to a template like that, it won't do that, which is kind of nice. That means you can have uh, recipes that are active, that that looks like real recipes, but miss certain bits and have all the other ones, the, the instances of those macros um, actually fill in the blanks. Um, so you can do, so if you wanted to like make this a little more parameterized, we could actually do something like this and we can say host equals And then instead of getting it from uh, a global section, we can just do this uh, colon by itself like this. So by default it's 333, but for our overloaded one here, we're going to make it 555. Um, I guess I don't need to build it each time. So you can kind of see you can build up quite complicated um, structures. Um, what else is there? Multiple build out files we saw with the extend equals function. The command line we saw a little bit. Um, ZCCMMI is kind of interesting. So we've got another production build out here. Uh, So we're doing a whole bunch of things. There's a recipe for supervisor and other stuff. Um, 
here's one here that uh, it's actually using another recipe, but it's similar. So what it'll do is it'll download Varnish for you. Uh, it will compile it, make it, and install it locally. Um, and then we've got this helper here. This is just one particular helper, or you can use the, um, the command template we talked about before to create a configuration. So this just uh, simplifies as a shortcut to creating configuration, um, and that does it uh, for Varnish and puts a whole bunch of things in there, which are default rules for Varnish for clone. So all I'd need to do to get this to make, for instance, is ensure that Varnish is in the parts section, which it's not. So if I put Varnish in here, go bin, build out. Um, let's just get rid of these other things here. No. So it's getting, it's actually now, it doesn't actually have that particular one locally. Um, posts is not fine because I just copied and pasted this from somewhere else. So I'm using, let's just get rid of that. Let's just get rid of those. Okay, so it uh, worked out that um, you know uh, dependency of the varnish was actually the varnish build. It worked out that the dependency of the varnish build was actually the um, PCRE library, uh, and it goes and installs a bunch of stuff. You don't have to go and install things locally um, and, and do the CMMI. Um, it's nice if you can pin the actual versions and say, okay, you know, I definitely need this version of varnish, and then you could have one version of Varnish running in this build out directory and another one running in another directory. Um, or you can just rely on the system ones and create the configuration files instead. Um, so I've done both of those. Um, really depends what you want to do. Um, it's kind of up to you. Yeah, sorry, if one's. Um, so what you do is always you run it locally with your own configuration file and you put in, you parameterize it and put your ports in. Um, so if I have a, what I'll do is I'll create a, um, a build out which represents a whole cluster of um, machines. They say what all the different ports that everything are using are so that I have one set of lists that I can check and say nothing's going to run on the same port. It has all the different IP addresses and then builds out all the different parts of the system uh, essentially from one configuration file. And I can recombine those and run it all up locally and make sure that none of the ports conflict, for instance. Um, so version pinning. Um, So when it does the, the install part of the make, it installs it locally. It doesn't go and install it in the system part. So it doesn't it doesn't do the last like it'll it'll specifically make it install it in. So do, I don't know if that ran to completion, um, but if you have a look at less parts varnish build. So then we've got a we've got a varnish sitting in here. Um, 
I mean, some a lot of people use, um, for instance, virtual env and build out together in order to kind of have a, a double buffer in a lot of ways. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, the, it's built um, Varnish, put it all in there. Um, and I think it, uh, it also created some kind of startup script in there as part of that build. So that will go and start Varnish for me. Um, so one of the really nice things is it makes, it makes these processes really easy. So for a project or a particular like integration project, or even uh, you know an open source project that involves bits and pieces of code is you can publish the build out file. People can download that, and within the same set of commands, which is to do the bootstrap and the build out, run it. They've got all the bits and pieces that are needed to to get going. Yeah. Um, so uh, different people's processes uh, differ. I mean. Some people believe that you shouldn't run build out in the production environment because it will do things like download eggs and things like that and isn't perhaps uh, reproducible. Um, so one of the things you should do is do this version pinning. Make sure that you've locked down every single version of every single thing so it doesn't go and pick different versions. Um, but you know, for our deployments, that's what we do. I, I gave a talk recently and I gave a talk last year also about this thing called host out which um, does the actual sending of the stuff to the server and, and, and running it on the server and, and, and uses that. Um, other people just check it out on source control on the server and run the build out and then you've got the production. You notice um, I had like separate files for my development and my production. So I can have a whole bunch of extra stuff in there like varnish and things like that that I don't need for testing. Um, but still have you know the same set of versions applied across both of them. Um, so version pinning, okay, see how you got this little version section down the bottom? What you can do is you can go and um, put the versions of all the eggs that get downloaded. Obviously when you use those, uh, those CMMI ones and, and other ones that download packages, then the versions are explicit in the past. Um, so to use the versions, all I do is go and tell it within this main build out section, versions equals, and then give it the name of uh, a part, which happens to also be called versions, referring to this. And then whenever it goes and makes a choice and says, I need to download this, you know, repos BFG package, I'm going to download the 1.2.2 version, not any other one. Um, so it gets you in a, out of a lot of trouble making sure you've got exact set of versions pinned to uh, what you want. Uh, This is a really good way of doing it. Um, so what this is is an extension. You can put it at the top. Um, let me just try doing that. And what that'll do is it'll print out all the unpinned versions. So it forces you to kind of see what you haven't pinned. So if I go extensions equals Remove my build out for some reason. I don't know why. But what it will do is it will print out a list of everything you haven't pinned. So that everything that build out has made up its mind to download and pick a version for itself that it's guessed at the version. Um, so that's used in a lot of environments to do that. Um, so there's loads of different, like if you go into PyPy and you just do a Google for, um, for recipe or build out, you'll find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lots of different innovation around different build outs and different things. I mean, here's some that I use. Um, so things like collective.recipe.dist just uh, downloads it into a local directory. So it's nice for things that uh, that you don't actually kind of need to run or don't have setup.py. Like for instance, uh, Django, I don't think uses setup tools. So you can just download the code and put it into a place. Um, the command one, you can just run uh, bash scripts. I don't know if you um, saw that. You'd take your build out script and you'd bootstrap 
the build out within the particular directory somewhere else and then run the build out script and it will install itself and then do it again and again. So if you start a script and then look at what's in the file that you want to push to the yep. external browser, how yep. do you actually then bootstrap your script and then install the build out script? Um, so the bootstrap was the thing I showed you at the beginning. <laughs> Which is a which is a just a, a standard generic Python file which will download, build out, and get you the initial build out dot. Yeah. So we'll, yeah. So so I could do this. I could do Bootstrap um, production, and what that's going to do is going to it's going to download setup tools. It's going to download. Um, it's going to download uh, build out and it's going to get me that initial bin slash build out so then I can run that and get the rest of it. So what are a lot of um, source controls, like if you go to um, uh, pack projects that use that, there's a bunch of different projects that use build out as a standard way to, to, to build um, their systems. Um, what they'll often do is have the bootstrap already in source control. So all you need to do is go Python bootstrap, bin slash build out, and you've got your whole environment done and two commands. Um, so that won't actually run build out. I need to run build out after that. And it will then go and do that. Um, I don't know. Um, you may want to, yeah, I'm not sure. That's a good question. Um, so then, that's actually the dump to pick versions, by the way, running there. You can see that these are all the things that weren't um, that were picked by build out that weren't pinned by me. Tells you what was required by what. So it's quite interesting. Yep, you can copy and paste it directly in and put it into your version section. And then you've got a complete pinned build out that you would then use in production, for instance, and make you know. You'd often want to keep your uh, you know your development version a bit more fluid. Um, okay, so uh, building your own recipes. Um, Sorry, just real quick. Um, yep. When you were actually creating the version, were you working on your own package, or were you using a package that was being built in the bootstrap and then compiled to the build out script and then made that version? Yes, if, if I just do build out and create the project. minus n, little n, or just leave it off, it will automatically go and find the latest versions for all those different packages. So, which is why it takes a bit longer. So the way in which the, the repository stuff is, um, so, so build out is built around the idea mainly of the Python package index and other indexes which pull in those particular packages. If you want to actually build in your own code, then you can use that extension called Mr. Developer. And so Mr. Developer gives you this command line tool here. Uh, I'd need to bin. Let's get rid of it again. Um, but anyway, the develop, bin slash develop uh, command, uh, what it does is it gives you things like an update command, uh, a push command to push your code back up, and a few basic things to see. Um, so like what it can do is do a status across every single package you've got and see if any of them are dirty, for instance, uh, if you've got uncommitted changes. So it gives you a nice way to go across a project that might be really heterogeneous. Like we have, you know, just because of the nature of our work, we have stuff that we're pulling out of SVN, stuff that we're pulling out of Git. We can't necessarily control exactly where the source control is coming from. Um, so again, it kind of fits into the story of, of build out being this great kind of glue that, um, that brings everything together in one spot. Um, I mean, one of the things I really like build out is that because it keeps everything in one place and automated, I, I basically have a goldfish, uh, a goldfish kind of memory and I forget stuff. So it, instead of documenting it, you can put it into build out and automate it. Um, so recipes. Um, you probably won't make your own recipes, but they're not really frightening. Um, they're not really frightening things at all if you want to make your own recipe. So all you do is you create a, a set of tools package that has an entry point. So if you haven't come across entry points, they're just a way to, to do things like that automatic installing of scripts or, or pointing to particular code. 
So it has a particular uh, entry point. And the actual class itself is a recipe has uh, initialization, which takes the options that you've seen in the part section of the, the build out. And you can do whatever you want. You can set other uh, options that then became available to other parts. You can Then you've got an install and an update. And all it does is you return the files that are generated as a result. And they just can be whole directories. And that's how it knows what to delete and what to regenerate. So if you give it a list of, you know, if it creates one single configuration file in your install, then it, you tell it the configuration file, it remembers and will de and delete it next time. It also looks for changes in that file and will regenerate if there's any changes in that file itself. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, Any more questions? Um. Yeah. Okay, so. So, so what virtual M does is um, you set up a virtual M directory, which is uh, like a local site packages. And what you do is you activate it. So what it does is change your command line so that when you type anything to do with Python after that, it will have a different Python path than you normally have. So the nice thing about virtual imp is it doesn't change the basic way of working with Python. If you type Python, it does Python. You don't have to go bin slash Python or anything. If you, if you do easy install, you just go easy install and it easy installs it into the virtual imp instead of, um, you know, the, the system. Python packages. Yep, absolutely. Uh, a lot of people do that. They'll, you know, they'll have certain global packages that they don't want part of the build out, which are part of a, a, a virtual env. They might have one virtual env um, connected to multiple Pythons, uh, m multiple build outs. I mean, all you're really doing when you're going with build out, again, it got rid of that. Mute the whole directory. Um, all it's really doing is pointing to a particular Python with a particular Python path. So what happens if you run build out on top of virtual env is that it points the Python back to the virtual env Python and those site packages. Um, the, the real difference with build out is you've got this configuration file and you've got these recipes. So it does a lot more and you can actually do things like you saw that um, Z3C recipe scripts, you know, you've got, you can have one stack of um, eggs there and another stack of eggs there with different sets of versions. So you, they're like two virtual environments by, by themselves, um, sitting side by side with their own stack of eggs in there. Um, whereas virtual environments, there's one, one stack of eggs, one set of system libraries. Um, we'll look at that again. Yeah, so this, um, when, it, when it actually links to the Python, I mean, that was one of the things that I didn't kind of show. The Python that you bootstrap it with is the Python that gets used for everything after that. So when I go Python bootstrap, I could go Python 2.4, or I could go, I could use the Python from my virtual environment. Um, where is my Python? Yeah, so I'm actually using a virtual environment there if I just go normal Python, not 2.6. That's why it has this, this bit at the beginning. Um, any other questions? Well, so, so the, the, the system that I didn't make build out, build out is made by a guy called Jim Fulton, but um, I did make something called collective.hostout, and what hostout does is actually combines the two together. It does fabric with build out. And what it'll do is it'll actually uh, automate the moving of the build out file to the remote server, moving the eggs to the server, uh, running the build out remotely. Uh, it'll automate things like uh, if you want to do things that are system installed using app get install or something like that, it'll do that for you and leave the rest to build out. So you can kind of choose which bits get done by a fabric kind of thing, which is global and can do things like root access and things that are done by build out. Um, 
I mean, I tend to do a lot of things via build out. Like when I do deployment, I do things like IP tables, um, configurations in my build out. Um, I do Munin plugin installs, things like that. I tend to put them in the build out um, because I can parameterize it much more easily than I can with Fabric. Fabric, I have to, you know, um, go and, you know, I can put it all in that one configuration file, I guess. And the other thing HostOut does is actually parameterizes the Fabric scripts a bit so that you can put things into your build out uh, that go and get run within the Fabric files. It's a, takes a little bit to get your head around, but uh, it's, it's a way of combining the two together. Um, I mean, you can see that a little bit. I think I had some stuff in. So what HostOut does there is it um, is actually saying, so HostOut is a build out recipe, and it will build a command that will then uh, use various different fabric files to create a whole new server and set it up with build out and then send the build out and run the build out. So all I'm doing there is saying, well, what the user should be, what the password is, what, what path it should go to on the remote host, uh, and what the host is. And then I go bin slash host out and tell it to go, and it goes and does it. Um, you can include it. Um, so normally they have to be within the build out environment, so you can, but you can extend. And one of the things I didn't show you is you can actually extend from remote files off web servers, uh, for instance. Um, so uh, Plone uses that a lot. So what they do is they have a, a centralized versions file for every single release of Plone that has all the different eggs, and then um, they go, you know, in your normal build out, you go build, build out extends equals, and the Plone 4.01 versions file, and it downloads it off the internet and runs that as part of your build out. So that could be one way of doing it. You also have a global um, build out defaults file, so I tend to put passwords in that. So there's, you know, tilde slash dot build out slash defaults dot cfg. So. Any other questions? No, this has gone on a long time. Let's go to the pub. <laughs> Sorry it took so long. Uh, let's go to the pub. <laughs>